All right, so good afternoon and thank you all for joining us today for our webinar as we take a closer look at Formlab's newest 3D printer, the Form 3L. Today we're joined by a partner and 3D printing specialist from Formlabs, Levi Smith, as well as our own additive manufacturing account manager, Kyle Narcos. We hope you've come with some questions for us. As usual, we'll save some time at the end of today's session for a question and answer period. Feel free to type your questions into the panel as they come up and we'll have our We'll do our best to answer them at the end of the webinar. Today's webinar will be recorded and we'll be sending you all the recording via email tomorrow. So if any questions arise afterwards, you can feel free to respond to that email and we'll be in touch shortly. So without further ado, I will pass things over to Kyle to get us started. Terrific. And Sarah, I really appreciate the introduction. Um, just, just a quick background on myself. My name's Levi Smith. I'm the uh, 3D printing specialist with Formlabs. Um, I cover the commercial sales side for our uh, indirect channel over here for Formlabs. And uh, again, I'm really excited to be here with Cab Micro. They're a terrific partner. And uh, yeah, I'll pass over to Kyle for a quick introduction. Hi, everyone. Um, so as Sarah mentioned, I'm Kyle Niarcos. I'm one of the additive account managers here at Cab Micro. And uh, as Sarah talked about, we're going to be going over the Form Labs Form 3L today with uh, Levi Smith. Um, Levi, do you want to go? Thank you. Um, so regarding the agenda for today, um, we're going to do a quick introduction on CAD Micro Solutions uh, before we jump into Form Labs. Uh, Levi is going to be providing you with a brief product overview on the Form 3L, uh, some information on the beta testing customers that have already had a chance to use the printer. Um, Levi has some sample parts for the 3L as well that he's excited to show to everybody here. Uh, we're also gonna go over some frequently asked questions about the printer and uh, we're gonna have some time at the end for a Q&A session as well. So as uh, Sarah and Levi mentioned, uh, the Form 3L is the brand new uh, 3D printing system from Form Labs. Um, it's something that is gonna be shipping by the end of this, or it's gonna be shipping relatively soon and orders placed today um, would be expected to ship out uh, by the end of Q4. So just a brief introduction on CAD Micro Solutions. Um, so we've been in business since 1984. Uh, we've got offices all throughout Canada. Our main office is in Toronto, Ontario, but as you can see, we've expanded into Montreal, Alberta, uh, British Columbia as well. Um, we've been partnered with Formlabs since uh, 2018. Uh, so we're just coming up on two years on our partnership and uh, along with 3d printing we also offer uh, innovative solutions for uh, solidworks uh, 3d metrology and vr and ar immersive technology so at this point i'm just gonna send things over to levi smith and let him continue with the presentation awesome and kyle really appreciate uh just just kind of walking through what cab micro solutions is all about um, and I just want to kind of touch on that as well over here at Form Labs. So, you know, as someone who covers uh, the North American commercial channel, you know, in terms of what we're looking for in terms of our partners, uh, we're very, very keen to find folks that can extend the user experience that we expect with our products through their brand, right? And I think that's something very, very unique to our partnerships, right? We're not just looking for folks that can just sell our product. They're there to deliver a brand new perspective with our product, right? And I think the beauty of working with someone like Cab Micro Solutions is their kind of holistic approach to solving application problems across the entire digital workflow. And you kind of see that in terms of the products they offer from 3D printing to um, 3D metrology, VR, AR, right? You, really what you have to do is just come to Cab Micro with an application problem. And whether that is upstream or downstream, they're gonna have a holistic solution for you. So again, really excited to be working with them for the, for the last couple of years, really excited about where we're going for the future. Um, and uh, absolutely, you know, if you guys haven't had a chance, take a look at their customer experience center. Um, I've had a chance to explore it a bit myself. Um, just gives you a really great perspective on uh, what your workflow could look like with some of the products they offer. Um, but kind of going off that point, you know, I want to start with Form Labs in terms of what, what our overall goal is um, over here. And that is really expanding access to digital fabrication so anyone can make anything. And there's two key questions we ask with regards to that statement. The first one, of course, is how easy can we make our products to use for anyone who wants to digitally fabricate, right? And I think a key component of that, a great stat I always like to kind of point towards or it is 
44% of our users have little to no 3D printing experience before working with our printers. And we're not just talking about folks that have FDM moving over to SLA. We're talking about folks who are coming out of the subtract subtractive space moving over to our product. You know, most folks are up and running within about 30 minutes of receiving their Form 3 or Form 2. And again, it's a very seamless user experience. It's very easy to use. The second question we're constantly asking is how much versatility can we inject into our platform, into our printers? And we really look at that in terms of materials, right? The, the amount of materials available really equates to the range of applications, the versatility of that platform. At Formlabs, you know, we, we're very, very aggressive with regards to the materials we offer. When we launched the Form 2, I think we had four resins. We're now over 30 plus resins, and we plan to aggressively double that quite, you know, over the next couple of years. So it's a very exciting time over here at Formlabs in terms of that. Just a quick rundown on our history. So, you know, our original founder, uh, Max, uh, comes from MIT, got a chance to work with SLA Technology in their media lab over there at MIT, and he was absolutely excited by this type of technology. The big thing he kind of took away from MIT was accessibility with regards to these type of tools. And that's uh, kind of when he got into his basement and built his first inverted SLA machine, the Form 1 that you see there on the far left. Um, he put that onto Kickstarter, trying to just give this technology to a couple of folks, give them the opportunity to work with this type of technology. Really just want to raise a couple hundred thousand dollars, bring this to a couple hundred backers. And uh, this is real, really where we found there was a terrific market out there for this type of product. Within the first 30 days of that Kickstarter campaign, we had raised three million bucks, had over 2,000 backers. And this is kind of the start of Form Lab. So that was the Form 1. We launched the Form 1 Plus in 2014, more ease of use, more reliability, more versatility. The Form 2 was a real game changer in terms of that ease of use and that material versatility, of course. Um, really allowed us to explore different market segments like dental, jewelry, just the range of applications we had available. We put about 40,000 of those Form 2s out in the world, and that was before we launched our brand new proprietary technology, uh, LFS, on the Form 3 and 3L. So again, it's been a really exciting journey. Uh, the Form 3B is obviously our biocompatible platform we launched at the end of 2019. Um, but just to give you a quick rundown, we got over 70,000 uh, printers in our install base, more, printing more than 70 million parts. And uh, it's a real straightforward formula when you start thinking about 3D printing. Um, it really just comes down to cost per part. How much does it cost for me to make the thing that I make? And this is a really kind of a, a, just a, a solid snapshot of what 3D printing has done over the last decade or so. So, you know, cost per part is obviously going down over time. And as it goes down, the range of applications available exponentially increases. So if you think about the initial start of this journey back in 2009, uh, 3D printing was really tied to high-end uh, applications based on, you know, very expensive large industrial machines, very expensive materials. So it was really tied to maybe prototyping and high-end industries like aerospace or maybe automotive. But as the uh, cost of the, uh, the printers has gone down, as the cost of materials ha have gone down, um, you see this exp exponential increase in the range of applications available. Whereas to now, we're really working on small, small batch production runs in plastic parts. We're looking at production manufacturing tooling for chicks and fixtures. And if you guys haven't had a chance, definitely take a look at some of the collaboration we're doing with New Balance. Um, New Balance is actually producing performance uh, midsoles with uh, the Form Labs platform. So if you haven't had a chance, definitely take a look at that. And uh, obviously today, we're really excited to really talk about the Form 3L. Obviously this product coming to market, getting out in the field. There's some really exciting things we wanna talk about, but I kinda wanted to start with you know, how we came to the conclusion that we needed to build something bigger. Now, this is not new to us, right? We've been, it's always been kind of a, a, a objection that customers have brought to us over the last six, seven years. But we, we really got together, crunched the numbers, looked at the data in, in terms of what that represents. So this is data we pulled from 3D Hubs, which is a distributed manufacturing platform in terms of all the SLA parts made on that platform, right? And so if you look at the, the far left, that's the volume of parts made. And at the bottom, that's the uh, obviously the size of that part. So the, the volume is obviously on the smaller side. And over time, obviously, you know, the, the amount of parts that are being made at, at a very large scale, a very large or medium to large size parts, obviously drops drops down in terms of volume. But the beauty of the Form 3L is the, the range it delivers with regards to what SLA parts you want to do. The, the range of applications, the opportunities to print exponentially increases in terms of that 
the, the size and that build volume of the Form 3L. So whether you want to build something tiny or build something you know medium to large size, you're going to have a machine that can absolutely get the job done, deliver the same quality, surface finish, reliability that people are used to on the Form Labs platform. And uh, it really covers a range in the SLA space. So uh, we'll drive right into the Form 3L. Um, I think the key thing I always like to touch on is the print volume, right? It's five times bigger than the uh, the, the Form 3. And uh, there's there's a lot of great stories out there. The, the one I always like to kind of start with is uh, the work we've done with Google's ATAP Lab. So if you guys haven't had a chance, Google's ATAP Lab is essentially their fabrication lab over at Google. Uh, it's where all the application problems go with regards to manufacturing, right? So essentially application problem uh, shows up at their door. On the other side of it, there's an application solution. We've done some really exciting work with them. And uh, as we were working with them, you know, we were kind of mentioning that we were thinking about building a larger SLA machine for the desktop. And essentially their response to us was, stop everything you're doing and do that immediately, right? You know, this is a group that has, you know, spends thousands of dollars or budgets thousands of dollars every month to outsource large SLA style parts for the work that they're doing. And um, it's really exciting to kind of just get that feedback from them, right? So this is, you know, there, there's been stories like that across the board for the last five or six years, but I always like to kind of start there. Um, so in terms of the Form 3L technology, um, you got a really good graphic there on the left in terms of our LFS or low force stereolithography technology at work. Um, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. Again, it's two compact systems or two LPUs associated to the Form 3L. Um, it's also got a lot of modularity built in. So these LPUs that you see, um, obviously the, the heart and soul of these printers, uh, they're modular. They're user replaceable. If anyone's ever had uh, an experience with our Form 2, um, it wasn't as modular as the Form 3 and 3L are. So, for example, if you had a Form 2, over time, maybe the optics started to degrade, you needed an RMA, it had to return to depot. You're usually out for about two weeks before you could actually get that machine up and running again. With the Form 3 and the 3L, with a modular LPU, which is usually 80% of our RMAs, uh, you're able to replace that yourself. So let's say you do have an optics issue. Um, we ship you out a brand new LPU. Um, it takes about five minutes to replace your back up and running. So it's really built for uptime and minimizing, of course, that downtime. So one thing I also want to touch on is the cross compatibility. We're always looking at our printers in an ecosystem and in terms of the workflow. So there's a lot of cross compatibility between the Form 2, Form 3, and the 3L. Um, it's going to be the same preform, the same dashboard, the same resin cartridges as you'd use on the Form 2, Form 3, and 3B. Um, it's got integrated sensors across the board, whether it's more, a more robust res resin level sensing tool to make sure that there's a proper amount of resin in that tray, to being able to detect, detect dust in the actual uh, tank itself. There's a range of sensors we've integrated into this platform. And finally, it comes with our proprietary technology, our low force stereolithography, which is really what allows us to build the, the high fidelity, high quality parts uh, that you see with the uh, Form Labs platform. And this is really what I wanna kind of drive into with the Form 3L technology. We talked about how you know, folks have constantly come to us and said, we love what we get. We love the reliability of the Form 2, Form 3. I just wish it was bigger, right? You know, that, that has been a constant conversation we've had. We really took that to heart. Um, but we understood with um, the current SLA technology that we're using with the Form 2, the ability to build bigger was really an impossibility, right? We couldn't build bigger with that traditional SLA process. And that was how we kind of came to the conclusion that we needed to build something new. And that's where low force stereolithography kind of comes into play. So just a, a, a general definition of that, um, SLA printing that uses a flexible tank and linear illumination to turn liquid resin into flawless parts. Um, obviously, there's two parts there. It's a, it's, it's not a rigid tank anymore, as you saw with the Form 2, and it's a modular LPU or an optics unit that's actually doing the printing. But through the process of low force stereolithography, what we're really doing is eliminating the peel force associated to traditional SLA or traditional inverted SLA. And what that does is it, it essentially eliminates uh, peel force roughly tenfold, right? And when you do that, not only are you building better layer upon layer, but you're able to build bigger, much bigger layer upon layer. And we'll really kind of touch on that through our beta testimonial feedback. But again, it, it was a real breakthrough for us. 
It's what allows us to build a, a machine the size of the Form 3L. So uh, just a quick rundown on the benefits, huge parts, high print success, same surface quality and fine detail, the same dimensional accuracy or fit form and function that people are used to with SLA and the Formlabs platform. Um, I think the picture above really kind of lets you know what you're going to be able to get accomplished with the Form 3L. So, you know, this is a print we've obviously done a couple of times on the Form 3L. It's roughly 1,700 milliliters. So it's about a liter and a half of resin to build the uh, the the prototype helmet that you see on the screen. So the, the parts that you're able to get, going to be able to print on this machine are, are really quite large, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Um, so with that said, we'll, we'll, we'll go into just a quick virtual demo of, of what this machine represents. I think the first thing we touched on is just the cross compatibility. One thing that will not kind of cross over here is obviously the build platform. So the build platform is obviously a lot more robust based on the size of parts that you're going to be pulling off this machine. Um, and yeah, just, just something to keep in mind there. In terms of the SLA process, um, it's, it is still, um, you know, it's SLA plus LFS, if you will. And just to give you an example of some of the parts that you can pull off this machine. Um, the, uh, the print process is a little bit different. It's obviously working on the X axis there, um, but it's gonna, it's gonna scan every layer um, and, and, and move in, in tandem with the print itself. And uh, some of the, the benefits of that when you have a, uh, an optics unit that actually moves across the entire build volume is there's no, uh, there's no issues associated to dimensional accuracy on the far side of, of the build platform, right? So regardless of where you set that part within the build volume, you're going to have the same uh, crispness of detail, the same dimensional accuracy across the entirety of that build platform. So just a key factor to keep in mind with uh, the new LFS technology. Um, the mixer, obviously, you know, this, uh, this is something that was kind of a new nuisance for some of the folks on the Form 2 platform, but just based on the new process, uh, there's a lot less mixing. Um, the level sense is, is way more robust, so it's always going to make sure there's a proper amount of resin. You don't have to babysit uh, the printer, um, and you really haven't since the Form 2, but it's going to make sure there's a constant, uh, consistent level of resin in that tray. So regardless of whether you're... Um, you're, you're next to the machine or not, whenever the resin gets low enough, it will obviously uh, make sure there's a proper amount or, or put more resin into that tray, if you will. And of course, you know, there, there's a couple other components I want to touch on as well. We, we, we slotted the motherboard or the, the, the main circuitry of the Form 3L to the far right. This is obviously just a precautionary measure just to make sure that, you know, obviously we're not worried about resin spills, but um, you won't ever have to worry about resin getting on the optics of the machine or the motherboard. We tuck that all into the far right side of the printer. It's essentially, you know, when the when the printer's at rest, we consider that uh, what we call garage mode. But, um, you know, everything kind of tucks into the far right. So if there's ever a catastrophic resin spill of any sort, again, they won't have to worry about it getting on any of the uh, sensitive kind of instruments in the machine. And uh, of course, the, the cartridges here, they're, uh, they're all cross compatible with the Form 2 and the Form 3. Um, the Form 3L does uh, require two, two resin cartridges to just cover the, the massive volume you're going to be able to print with. And so with that said, I want to run right into beta feedback. So I think this is one of the really exciting things we've done over at Form Labs, which is we, we, we obviously took a little bit more time to get this machine out in the world. But what that really gave us was a terrific opportunity to gain perspective with some beta customers, some really key opinion leaders in this space that um, had great perspective with working with SLA day in, day out across a range of different SLA products. So uh, the one we're going to talk about today is Optimus Ride. Um, they develop self-driving technologies for uh, essentially equitable mobility systems. And one of the key things they kind of ran into um, with regards to 3D printing is just the tremendous um, cost and, and time loss associated to outsourcing, right? So they had long lead times, high cost for service bureaus and prototyping large sensor enclosures. And, uh, you know, they were very much a, uh, a, a big proponent of bringing uh, 3D printing in-house, um, even if it was a smaller build volume than they're used to, right? They love the idea of being able to control their product development uh, cycles much closer than outsourcing. And so, you know, originally this is kind of their approach, right? They're taking uh, these large sensors and they were um, essentially building them in sections 
and uh, piecing them together, right? So obviously they could control their design cycle much better that way, but it increased the amount of post-processing they had to do every time they had to put a prototype together. And um, that's something they got right off the bat with the Form 3L is they didn't have to, they had to, they could absolutely eliminate all that post-processing. And what they were really impressed with is based on the size of these parts, they're still getting that same high fidelity finish that they were getting with the Form 3 and Form 2 platform. So and it, everything everyone's used to with the SLA product in terms of, you know, fit, form, and function, accuracy, and of course, uh, surface quality, but at a much larger volume. So just to give you an idea what folks are really talking about with regards to the Form 3L, um, definitely stay tuned with CAD Micro. There's going to be a lot of these stories coming out in terms of that beta feedback. So Jeff, definitely uh, set some time aside to, to, to speak with Kyle, speak with the CAD Micro team, because there's going to be some great stories come out with regards to how these folks have been using this in their workflows. Um, so we'll do a quick sample part review. I got a couple of sample parts in front of me. Give me two seconds. I'm going to pull up my uh, webcam here. Um, the first part we want to talk about is the, uh, the standard vacuum nozzle. So this will be our standard part that we're building. Again, this is done in gray resin, and uh, it takes about five hours per, per nozzle. Um, we, all, we build these directly on the build platform here, so hopefully you guys can see just the detail. Again, there's no support structure, just based on the way we uh, optimize it for our print, uh, print platform. But again, done in gray resin, 100 microns, takes about five hours to print and roughly uh, you know, less than 10 bucks in material used. Another part I was gonna show you is one directly on uh, the support structure. So this is a full-blown femur in our clear, um, 100 microns, and I, I can't recall the time on this one, but uh, just to give you an idea of how it was oriented within our build volume there. So I wanna kind of showcase those parts. You can see some of the lettering there on the part itself. Um, so just want to give you just a, a quick look at those. Um, in terms of what materials will be supported on the uh, the Form 3L platform as we as we start to ship, uh, we're going to have four right off the bat. We're going to have our gray, our clear, our Tough 2000, and our Elastic 50A, which is which which is the bulk of some of the materials we that people are very excited about use quite a bit. Um, but we'll have a fairly aggressive release schedule with regards to uh, the other materials in our library, right? So we have over 30 resins. We plan to get a good portion of those validated uh, in the coming months here as this machine gets out into the wild. Um, and just to reiterate, right, you know, pre-order is placed now. We'll start shipping at the end of this year. So definitely something to keep in mind. If you have any questions on this, definitely reach out to Kyle and the CAD Micro team. Um, obviously, they have the details. And, uh, you know, if we all have to hop on a call together, we absolutely can. So just want to reiterate that point. Uh, Pre-order is placed today. We'll ship before the end of the year. Um, a question that's come up quite a bit uh, with regards to end users who, who are used to working with the Formlabs kind of platform and ecosystem is, What's post-processing look like? So the first thing I want to touch on is, you know, the traditional wash and the traditional cure for medium to large size parts, especially the ones I just showcased, won't fit on the traditional form wash and form cure, right? Um, we do have uh, a finishing kit that's going to be associated to each pre-order, uh, very similar to what you get with the form two or form three right off the bat. It's a manual kind of washing station. Uh, this one's obviously going to be much bigger based on the parts associated with Form 3L, um, but you know it's going to have some really cool features associated to it. It's just a standard manual washing kit. But for anyone out there who's looking for a more automated washing solution uh, for their uh, Form 3L, we do have third-party uh, off-the-shelf recommendations that we have validated. Uh, this is the washing solution we've already validated. Of course, it's the Elma P180 or P300 ultrasonic cleaning solution. So, you know, if this is, a, you know, something of a barrier within your organization, we do have third-party recommendations that have been validated. Again, any questions on that, don't hesitate to reach out with Kyle. He's definitely, he definitely has those details as well. Um, and so just, just to kind of, you know, kind of summarize a little bit here, you know, just I want to give you guys a quick rundown on the specifications of the uh, Form 3L. So the build volume uh, is 13.2 by, 13 by 7.9 by 11.8. Again, there's going to be two modular LPUs as opposed to just the one that you get with the Form 3. Um, it's going to give you the opportunity to have a lot of resin in this machine, so two resin cartridges for continuous printing, and just some of the traditional features you get with the uh, the new LFS platforms, which you see there, right? You know, a lot of the parts I showed you 
um, and that fine detail was all printed at 100 microns. And that's just another added benefit of LFS. Uh, it really is a, a more effective way to build layer upon layer. And uh, you know, printing at 100 microns, our beta customers are absolutely getting the detail, the surface, quint, surface finish, and kind of the fit form and functionality they're looking for in these prototypes. So in terms of how much it will cost, um, currently we're still in the pre-order price phase of this product, right? So this all changes September 14th, um, but currently you can uh, lock in your pre-order price for uh, less than 10,000 US dollars. That's gonna include the printer, a build platform, uh, uh, essentially a Form 3L tank, and of course a finish kit. So that's the standard starting package that you get for that uh, $10,000. As of September 15th, that price will change um, to 10999 and I guess, up. Oh, I apologize, Cal. On to you. No, oh, thanks, Levi. Um, so yeah, just to build on what Levi said, um, we're very excited to be bringing the Form 3L to the Canadian market. Um, you know, feel free to get in touch with myself or CAD Micro. Uh, we can answer any questions you have about the machine, uh, help you with an ROI um, estimation or calculation, depending on what you need, um, and really just answer any questions you have about the technology. Um, Levi, before we go into the Q&A session, I was wondering if you could show the sample parts one more time. Um, yeah, absolutely. Maybe just, yeah, maybe just take uh, a step back so people can see the size. Yes, so I know I, 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 I try to get a, a bottle that kind of represents, this, this is a 20 ounce bottle, just to give you a rough idea what that kind of looks like in terms of the size. But yes, here, you, you can walk me through a call if that's if that's a good enough no, no, representation. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to kind of highlight the the accuracy as you talked about, along with the size that you're getting off this new printer. So, um, exactly. yeah, like I said, we're very excited to be bringing it to the Canadian market, and uh, yeah, feel free to get in touch with either myself or CAD Micro, and uh, we can always bring Form Labs in as needed as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, the other thing I was going to mention as well, you know, I, I touched on the fact that we've gotten a terrific amount of beta testimonial feedback from folks who have been doing decades of work in additive for the last, you know, with a lot of SLA technologies that have been available. Um, so definitely stay tuned uh, for a, another joint webinar we're doing September 23rd. There's going to be a lot of perspective added in this webinar from a lot of beta testimonials that we've collected over time the last, uh, I'd say, six months or so. So it's, it's going to be a really, really good perspective for anyone who's interested in the Form 3L. And today, again, we want to make it short and sweet. So we want to kind of open it up for, uh, for Q&A at this point. Awesome. Thank you, Kyle and Levi. That was great. So as mentioned, we do have some time for a question and answer period. So if anyone has uh, questions, please type those in now and you know keep them coming. There, there is a few in the queue. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started with what we have. So the first question I hear, have here is for um, Levi. And if I order a 3L before the price changes on the 15th, when should I expect to receive it? So you should expect to receive it before before Christmas is is really what we're what we're targeting there so if you lock it in today that's what we're looking at awesome okay next question i have here is is the 3l faster per cubic cm build time than the form 3 since it now has two lasers so that's a great question that's something we're still really continuing to dial in um at this point i'd say it's going to be a little bit slower uh as as we start um but just in terms of the ROI, what you're going to what you're going to get in return, you know, most folks who outsource medium to large SLA parts are usually looking at those outsourced parts at about a two week turnaround. Right. So um, is it going to be as fast as the form three three on on a uh, print by print basis uh, to start? It's going to be a little bit slower, but just like our form two or form three over time, as more of these machines get out into the field, we start to get a lot of feedback from those machines we constantly optimize our material uh, speed, right? And so that's what you kind of saw with the Form 3 last year. You know, the initial ones got out, they're a little bit slower. Over time, the Form 3 actually got faster than a lot of the resins on the Form 2. And that's really what you're gonna see with the Form 3L as well. You know, these initial resins will be a little bit slower, but as more resins become available, as more time passes and more of these units are out in the field, our, uh, our software team has an exponential amount of time to optimize 
change some of the uh, prints actions and really speed this thing up. And um, like I said, it's it's going to continue to increase its speed output over time. Awesome. Thank you, Levi. Uh, the next question I have here is, do I still need one resin tank per material like with my Form 3? So yes, so absolutely, you, you definitely do. It's definitely a recommendation on our side. Um, it gets real tricky if you're trying to kind of uh, clean trays to, to not, not worry about another one. So that's, that's our recommendation on a regular basis. Um, these trays are a little bit bigger than what you get on the Form 2 or Form 3, but we have a very convenient case uh, associated with each uh, resin tank. So when you receive your resin tank, it's going to come in like a, like a box with a hood. And it's hard to explain <laughs> verbally here, but um, each tank will have its own uh, case that you can store it in. And uh, it's very stable in terms of the resins. We build those all in-house. And usually what we say is, you know, any material left in the tray on the machine is good for at least a month. You put it in that case, you got a good uh, two months of lifetime there before you have to, you know, maybe take a look at it, see what's, see what's going on in that tray. But it's very stable. And uh, we do recommend, you know, for each resin that you want to print in, that you're using a separate, um, a, a new uh, new tank, if you will. Awesome. Uh, the next question I have here is, is this the first resin-based 3D printer? Can you help me with installing the printer and getting up to speed on how to use it? That is a great question, Kyle, go ahead. Yeah, so I can take that one. Um, so if it is your first resin-based 3D printer, um, CAD Micro is offering uh, online training in installation services uh, for these printers. Um, due to COVID-19, we're you know trying not to go on site, but if you do need a technician on site to walk you and your team uh, through the Formlabs workflow, how to use the printer and how to leverage the technology as efficiently as possible, um, it's something we're happy to discuss with you as well. So. Uh, you can use my contact info that we showed earlier in the slides, and I can give you more information on that, or feel free to get in touch with CAD Micro, and we can go through that process with you in more detail. Awesome. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, my next question here is, can I use the wash and cure station from my Form 3 or Form 3L parts? Yeah, so that's a really good question. Um, it's really going to depend on what you're building with the Form 3L, right? So, for example, some of the parts that I've shown today, uh, will not be able, you won't be able to use the form wash and the form cure currently available on that platform. Uh, they're just too big. So we do have off the shelf third party recommendations. Um, you will have a, a washing, like a, like a manual washing kit associated each pre-order. So you will have the ability to wash your parts. Um, and uh, again, we have third party recommendations for uh, larger washing and curing stations for the form 3L. Uh, next question, what type of soft elastic materials are possible with the 3L? So that's a really good question. Um, you know, currently available, uh, when we start shipping, we're going to have Elastic 50A available, which is, um, it's probably one of our most popular elastomers. Um, Flexible ADA is another great choice. Um, that one is uh, probably our closest to rubber like material that you're going to get. That's going to be available on this printer a little bit later in this year, I'd say uh, probably beginning of Q4, if you will. Um, but, you know, you, you bring up kind of a good question there, which is, you know, just the material availability of the Formlabs printers. And I always like to kind of touch on this when it comes to kind of Formlabs. So what I'll do is I'll actually kind of just go back to that, that screen on um, the materials available, just so you guys see what's available as it starts shipping. But I always like to kind of touch on what we do, what we think about when we think about materials, right? It's part of our ecosystem and um, we're very R&D focused over at Formlabs, right? So there's a huge allocation of our budget to R&D and there's usually three groups of R&D at Formlabs, right? There's the Emmys building the brand new machines. There's the preform or slicing software team building the newest iterations of our preform. Um, the real rock stars over at Formlabs are our materials team, the material scientists associated with Form Labs. And what they do in that kitchen, what they cook up in that kitchen is truly something special. Polymer science is a very boutique science. So we got to pull our material engineers straight out of the university. 75% of them have their PhD. And what they're able to do has been something special. We've exponentially grown our material library. Um, and you know, you can just see that this year, right? This year, I think we've launched close to 11 new resins. So we've, we've essentially increased our uh, material library by 30, 
this year alone, and it's a real byproduct of our low force stereolithography. So LFS has a tremendous amount of benefits. Really, today we talked about, uh, you know, its ability to allow you to build bigger parts. But another added benefit of LFS is the range of materials you're going to have available based on building layer upon layer better with LFS, right? So think about more viscous materials, more filled materials. You know, we have some really exciting stuff going on. Tough 2000 is a great example of that. So, you know, for example, Tough 2000 was only possible on LFS. You know, it's a different material. It didn't really print well on the Form 2. And uh, if anyone's printed with our Tough V5, most people like it for its strength. Uh, the biggest detractor of Tough V5 was brittleness. Uh, Tough 2000 actually eliminates brittleness. So it's less brittle, it's actually tougher than Tough V5, and we needed LFS to make that happen. So um, I'm making this question a long-winded answer, but I wanted to talk about just the material, the way we focus on materials at Formlabs. You know, it's a, it's a key focus, and LFS really unlocks a lot of doors in terms of what we're going to be able to get accomplished. So I'd love to kind of hear your feedback on that. You know, if you've seen our material library and you're curious, you know, hey, you know, what is the the one resin that you'd love to see or the material attributes that you'd love to see that are currently not available? And that's definitely feedback I can get from Kyle and the CAD Micro team. So just as a takeaway for anyone on this call. Amazing, thank you, Levi. Uh, the next question I have here is, what is my ROI on this new printer? Oh, another good question. Um, so. <laughs> The, uh, the ROI on this printer is actually going to be better than what you get on the Form 3 or Form 2 platform. So if you look at traditional outsourcing uh, with medium to large SLA parts, you're usually looking at somewhere between 700 and 1000 bucks per piece. Um, and that's, you know, usually with a two week lead time. So if you if you think about it in that frame, uh, your your ROI on this printer is uh, essentially accomplished within the first 10 to 15 prints that you have. Awesome. Sorry, Sarah, just to build on that, um, just to reiterate one of the points we made earlier, um, we're happy to help you build out an ROI based on your specific needs and the parts you're printing today. Um, we can also do that for parts that you'd like to print with the Form 3L. Um, really, we can just walk you through that ROI process and get a number that you know is relevant for you and the, and the company you work for. So we're happy to help with that. And uh, Form Labs is happy to jump in uh, at any point as well. Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks, Kyle. The next question I have here, I know we've talked a lot about materials, but the question is, what is the shelf life of materials? So um, shelf life for any of our resins, and again, they're very stable. So, you know, shelf life uh, from the date of manufacture is, is 24 months or about two years. Perfect. Awesome. Next question I have is, do you offer EDU discounts on the 3L? So um, definitely something to take up with Kyle and the uh, CAD Micro team. Um, I'm happy to, to help facilitate that. We we tend to be very, um, you know, there's a lot of value in these printers, right? Right off the bat, um, just just looking at the ROI things like that. But um, we're happy to work with you if there, if there's some budget constraints we got to work with. Then um, definitely speak to Kyle and the CAD Micro team with regards to um, any type of discount structure. And uh, awesome. sorry, just to build on that, um, we do a lot of work with EDU uh, schools uh, across the country today. So uh, if you are from an educational uh, institution and you're looking to build out your 3D printing capabilities, um, we have an entire department at CAD Micro that focuses specifically on that. And we're well equipped to kind of help you build out your additive platform and help you uh, bring that technology into your school. Amazing. Perfect. Okay, last question here is, can I get a benchmark print? Yeah, so I can take that one. Um, so for a benchmark print, we will be getting a demo unit of our own. Um, we're still working on a confirmed timeline for that. Um, we also are partnered with Form Labs, so we can always talk to Form Labs about getting a benchmark part done for you. Um, the best thing to do if you are looking for a benchmark part on the Form 3L is just to reach out to either myself or CAD Micro um, we can take a look at your STL file, make sure that it's a good fit for the Form Labs printer, and uh, we can get that whole process started for you. So, something we're happy to explore uh, on a case by case basis. And uh, yeah, like I said, feel free to get in touch and we can definitely walk you through that. Fantastic. Thank you, uh, Kyle and Levi. That was an awesome presentation and a great QA. And so, I think that's all the time we have for today. 
As mentioned, if any questions do arise after we finish here today, please don't hesitate to reach out to your account manager or reply to the webinar email that you'll be getting after this uh, webinar with the recording and we'll keep in touch. And once again, thank you Kyle and Levi for such a great presentation and thank you to everyone who spent some of your Thursday afternoon here with us and please stay safe and healthy and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Two weeks before you could actually get that machine.